Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of That's a Wrap. My name is Austin Jameson, and joining me today is Anthony Gentry. Hello. Yeah. So we have a lot of talk, a lot to talk about this episode. Yes. Um, I do want to call it right now. Uh, we have some guests in the studio uh, shadowing us for uh, just a little education with the t- uh, studio. Um, they, uh, we have one or two. They might chime in. If uh, well, we can just do this real quick if you want. Uh, Andrew, uh, if you want to introduce yourself. Hello, uh, I'm Andrew Walsh. Uh, I might chime in every now and then. Um, we also have... Uh, Andrew Bellama. Yeah. And uh, what's your show going to be? Uh, it'll be called Andrew Squared. Uh, we haven't had dates finalized yet, so... Yeah, well, we're looking Sounds forward interesting. to it. Uh, but until then, uh, you're not allowed to talk, so I'm going to turn no. off your mic now. So you have to be silent now? Uh, no, but, and always. Uh, I know for some of the things we're going to talk about, they may or may not have some thoughts. Yeah. Uh, and whenever we get there, we'll get there. But we're going to start with uh, probably one of the most. Ooh, oh, look, yeah. I, I have one. Ladies and gentlemen, the king has returned. That's right. Ted Lasso is back. A new trailer for Ted Lasso has dropped. Austin, I know you haven't seen this show. Yeah. It is my favorite show on television right now. Mm -hmm. It is so good. Uh It's about kindness. Jason Sudeikis has a mustache. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. And this trailer, it didn't really give us much. Um, Just a a few characters every now and then. But... (laughs) But it, it looks amazing. <laughs> and I can't wait for it to come out. It comes out next month. It's going to be great. But that's all. We can move on. <clears throat> Let me uh, find my composure here. Sorry for uh, <laughs> the <laughs> interruption. Should uh, we stop? <laughs> should, should we stop? I think it's pretty fun it's fun so far. Um, apologies. Uh, these are our guests. Our two close friends of ours. Yes. So. Um, and... Uh, we're getting yeah. a little silly. It's, be- um. it's a little interesting already. <laughs> but let's move on, because we have a lot to talk about. What's next, Austin? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep your composure. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Super Bowl happened over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, I didn't we watch are it. going play by play. Um, um, so uh, first down. Anthony, please. Uh, um, please. I think it was the, the oh. Chiefs. Um, oh. he, he, Thank you for They, they had a touchdown. <laughs> Okay, they, uh, sports, uh, they're interesting sometimes, uh, but sometimes. most people watch them, or at least the Super Bowl, I say never. to get advertised to, and that's what happened. We have the Transformers is what we're going to talk about first. Yeah. Uh, I don't know which movie this is. There's probably like seven or eight of it's, them now. I think um, it's seven, yeah. What do you think of this, Anthony? Um, Pete Davidson is a car. Is he in this? That He's He was the, car? the Transformer. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> it, um, it also felt like a uh, car commercial, too. Transformers. Um, it, yeah. it, it was a little cool seeing the the main dude just walk out and then the Transformer transform. I've never seen any <laughs> of the movies. I've only seen Bumblebee. Really? So I just know. Are the, you joking? N- no. You've never seen any of the like original movies? Um, my dad took me to see the third one when I was eight. And even then, I mm-hmm. knew this movie sucks. So I just looked up at the ceiling in protest. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's very elitist of you. It was. I think I, I, I really liked the Transformers movies when I was a kid. You would. Anthony. Yeah. I do not have it in me right now to defend the Transformers (laughs) movies. Do it. Um, So, no, I won't. Uh, This movie doesn't look any different than any of the other ones. I think the general rule with most – well, something we're going to talk about later as well with, like, most movies that have, like, six or more of them. If you've watched one of them, you've seen them all. Uh, This one doesn't look any different. Bumblebee was good. I liked Bumblebee. I'm glad. Anthony. You didn't like it? No, I, I didn't oh, see okay. it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, I saw probably the first four Transformers and then gave up. Um, same with, uh, it's kind of out of order, but I'm, I'm just going to go to it right now. All the right. Fast and Furious movies. Yeah, Family. Um, family. They really like that The one. newest installment in the FF universe, the Fast and Family universe. Um, anyways, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, and you know it. <laughs> let the record show I don't think it was Anthony I'm sorry <laughs> uh, do you want to go ahead and tell me what you thought of the Fast um, X trailer it was like yeah. 4 minutes long did so you, did I you have, make it through um, I did unfortunately mm-hmm. I have only seen 2 and a half Fast and Furious movies mm-hmm. I watched uh, Furious 7 I thought it sucked the only memorable part was when The Rock broke out of his cast 
and was miraculously heal- healed. Mm-hmm. And when Vin Diesel punched the ground and broke it. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> and then I watched um, half of Hobbs and Shaw before I walked out. Right. And then F9. You, well, you, like, well, you love walking out of movies, don't you? I, no, do I you don't. Me- do you remember In the Heights? Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> that was not my choice. Okay. And then I watched Everybody F9 where they swung a car f- from a vine like Tarzan. Mm-hmm. That one was good. That was then, great. <laughs> it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, John Cena. Okay, let's start. Uh, or, no, you keep going. Yeah. I'm sorry. So then um, this I'm trailer comes on, and me, the Fast and Furious historian that I am, uh, it, 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 it was a lot of family in this trailer. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of dumb action, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not here for it. It just. Wow. I know, shocking. Hot take. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just looks like it just keeps getting dumb. I know Jason Momoa. He blew up a town or a whole city. <laughs> what did he? Why did he do that? I don't know. He in the trailer he just blew oh. up a <laughs> Jason Momoa himself. <laughs> yeah, you got to be more specific. And, One second. Oh, Let me turn we, we on do the mic. have a special guest. Right. Um, so I watched about the first minute of this, yes. and there's one specific shot where Vin Diesel, like I don't know if it's his kid, but he's in a car, and Vin Diesel's in the window, and it looks. I don't know if it's just the lighting or what, but mm-hmm. he looks so entirely fake and like CGI <laughs> Vin in Diesel it. Vin looks constipated whenever <laughs> he ha- he tries to do an action movie look. Yeah. I and I I saw what was, what was the one it was, it, it, John Cena was in F nine. Yeah. F9. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed that. I remember I you saw did? that. I saw in All theaters. All right, cut off his mic. <laughs> <laughs> and the the car swinging from the vines. Yeah. Uh, oh. John Cena. It was enjoy. It was enjoyable. The dumb you know? fun is what you got to sign it's, up. For it's, now yeah, but it was it was too dumb. It's not it's not supposed to be serious. I don't. And then think. Like, like John Cena being his brother, and then the flashback sequences of when they were <laughs> kid mechanics, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like he went to jail for family. <laughs> Listen, I think the Fast and Furious franchise, like many, are flying very close to the sun. Yeah, how many? Or they literally did that in F nine when they went to space. You're not wrong <laughs> with duct tape. You're absolutely not wrong. Have you? Which ones have you seen? <laughs> None of them. No. <laughs> the only one I've seen is F nine, so I, I I can't. Base. So I'm the most experienced person here with two and a half movies. Well, Anthony, I don't want to tease anything, but I'm gonna tease something. There's a project that are I've been you, talking about for years. Are you years. actually going to do it? I don't know. We'll see. Um, Can I do it with you? No. <laughs> this is a so. This is a passion project All right. for me. All right. Um, but it re- it re- uh, revolves around the uh, Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we can we can leave it at uh, it's you could call it like a, have kind to, of like an exclusive you have to special start it soon. I can start it whenever I want, Anthony. It's what, a passion project. What is okay. this project? What is this passion project? Well, I can uh, I can Do elaborate. You want to a, it? I can elaborate a little bit uh, sooner or later. Uh, I plan on doing a standalone special uh, podcast. It is a 10, 11 episode <laughs> series, uh, start and shut, where I. Completely watch each <laughs> Fast and Furious movie on the podcast and get my thoughts. On when that. does Fast X comes out? Because you have ten movies, that would be like ten weeks to do it. <laughs> uh huh. So if it comes yeah. out in ten weeks, you have to start now. Well, I'm not gonna do it for like that big reveal. I'm doing it whenever I want to. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, you gonna, gotta I'm probably gonna wait until you, you have yeah, to lead up to Fast fa- yeah, Eleven, the new F or Fast X or whatever. I'm like super. Not actually well, wanting to yeah. do that right now. I, I don't know if I was confused by this, but would you be watching the movie on yes. in, in the, the each podcast <laughs> the entire length my, of the movie? My, my <laughs> favorite thing about Fast and Furious <laughs> is that every villain does these atrocities, mm-hmm. and then they become a good guy at the end. He's like, you know, I was just misunderstood. You're yeah. my family now, well, well, and then everyone dies and comes back to life. <laughs> Well, that's why I, I completely forgot John Cena was yeah. his brother in, in F9. That was the big reveal at the yeah. end. And, and he, no, they tell you at the beginning. Oh, yeah. oh, do they? But, like, oh, he murders it's... so many people and stuff. He, like, destroys a town, and it's like, hey, you're my brother. We're family. Fa- family. We're family. Family. And oh, now um, he's a good guy in this. We, My roommates and I were having a, because we, we watched the first minute of it last night, and we were having a conversation about how, uh, there's gonna be like an FF twenty, and they're just gonna like Vin Diesel's gonna be completely just like AI CGI or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and he's like. I hear they're bringing back Paul Walker with CGI in this one. I want. Are they? I I heard something about that. Like his brother was on set. Well, uh, didn't they? Didn't they tease it at the end of? Uh, yeah, they teased it yeah, at the end of F nine. Yeah. Um, I really just want them. Um, so Austin, hear me out. Yeah. Who owns Fast and Furious? Who owns Fast and Furious? Yeah. Uh, Universal like the company, okay. Yeah. Universal, okay. Who owns 
the Jurassic Park franchise. Is it Universal? Universal. Okay. Vin Diesel riding a T Rex. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the most amazing thing? Let me stomach this real quick. One second. W- would th- would the T Rex be his family? It, he would. By chance? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the T right. Rex would be the villain at first, and then at the end he's like, Whoa! Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love the idea. Can we fit Chris Pratt in that universe? Yeah, yeah, he'll okay. be doing the hand thing the whole time. <laughs> he <laughs> do, does it to a do car. Vin Diesel. It's no, Vin he does Diesel, it to like <laughs> revving the engine on the car. It's Chris Pratt holding. No, his no, hand it's out. just Vin Diesel, like on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have properly talked about our yeah. thoughts. On um, the trailer looks great. Can't wait to review it. Uh, I can't wait to review it either. Yeah, Vin That'll... Diesel. Say what you will about the man, but he will give you a good time in the theater. <sighs> With that interesting wording, we're going to move on to our next topic. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about another Super Bowl spot. All right. Um, this one is a much shorter one uh, that I know you're much more excited for than I am just because I've not seen them and I want to see them. Oh, just, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to get around to it. But, uh, of course, the Indiana Jones uh, new movie, uh, yeah. number five. Was you haven't seen them, again. why, because you're a hater? No, because I'm busy and also lazy, really yeah. lazy. Um, um, I, I really yeah. like this teaser. I thought it was really cool. It was really good. It was super short, so it doesn't give us much. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it gave us more Harrison Ford, yeah. and the de-aging looks good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I played the Lego Indiana Jones yeah. video game and loved that. Exactly. Uh, so you're all set. You don't need to watch the movies. Pretty much, yeah. Is Shia LaBeouf going to be in this one? Oh, no. No. Okay. I'm fine. That's yeah. like our second, uh, like remake or not remake, but like sequel to a movie with Shia LaBeouf and that we talked about today. Oh Was yeah, Shia LaBeouf in any of the Fast movies? Probably no. not. No. Um, maybe anyways, the next ones. Let's talk about another quick or wait, not wait, a quick wait, wait, one. Wait, wait. This was just Sorry, Shia. Just going back to Fast and Furious. Oh my God! <laughs> Did you hear what Vin Diesel said? He who he wanted to be the villain in the the eleventh one. Who's that? Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> he said because. Robert Downey Jr. is going to be a guy who likes AI, like Iron Man, and that and that's the antithesis to Vin Diesel. And he said it's the the Christ and the Antichrist. Like verbatim? That's what he's... I think that's what the, one of the producers said or okay. something like that. But th- that's kind of saying that Vin Diesel in The Fast and Furious is, is, is Christ. G- yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can get I can get behind that. I feel like Vin Diesel was just like Iron Man, Iron Man AI, AI. I, do- has Has anybody ever seen like Vin Diesel operate outside of a movie though? Has Groot. he ever done interviews? No, I mean just like. Oh yeah, he's like in real life. He's super charming in interviews. Is he? Yeah. Okay. I've never seen like anything where he's not on a screen or yeah. like a you know. I don't think I have either. Yeah. So it's, it's purely been. I on think screen. he might be the AI. He, he might be. He did look quite AI in the tra- in the trailer. He did that one at one car scene through the window. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He's just saying. Yeah, but um. Anyway, what's the next trailer we yeah, have? Let's talk about Air. Um, Air. Yeah. You know the shoes, uh, Anthony. The shoes. Have you heard of the shoes? What shoes? I think they're Air Jordans. What are shoes? Anthony, I know you. I know you. I. Okay. Work with me here. Uh, Air Jordans is a new. Uh, is it a show? It's a movie. It is a movie. Yeah. It comes out uh, in April, uh, and it's it's got directed by Ben Affleck. It's got yeah. Matt Damon, and then it's got uh, who's the third that I'm missing? Oh, Viola Davis. Uh, well, uh, Viola Davis. Oh, Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman. Yeah, um, and written by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, who also wrote um, Good Will Hunting. Oh, okay. yeah. And then fair enough. Uh, it it has potential in that regard. I don't know anything about the shoe or I the thought controversy with the shoe. There's a controversy. I don't know. Why are they making a movie about because it? Because it's, it's like not very interesting. Well, because uh, the making of it was interesting, I guess. It's a shoe, man. Yeah, but um, it's a shoe the trailer. Yeah, I thought it looked all Is right. Michael Jordan even. It in was it? there was one shot of like the back of his head, mm. and that it was very interesting to have a trailer centered around Michael Jordan and not <laughs> have him in it. Well, I don't think it's a. Well, it's not about Michael Jordan, really. Yeah, but I, I well, think yeah, I just think it, it's in interesting. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Viola Davis plays his mom. Uh, this is an interesting awesome. episode, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's really interesting dynamic when you got like people actually watching you. Exactly. Um, we don't look up like listener count or no. anything, but right now we got two people uh, giggling <laughs> violently in the corner. Uh, mostly one of them. Yeah, one of them. I, I just keep trying to make laugh more. 
There they go. All right, yeah. let's go ahead. Let's let's move on. Uh, air, air looks okay. Yeah, yeah, it looks fine. We'll see We're trying to speed run through this because we have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and we spent like what ten minutes on Fast on X? Fast and Furious. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next uh the ne- next trailer is a controversial one. Oh, uh, it's the Flash. Yeah. Um, is this supposed to be like the last entry in the modern DC before James Gunn I don't, takes over? I don't know. I, because okay. well, James Gunn said that the Flash is like the reboot. Mm-hmm. But Aquaman comes out after the Flash, yeah, and that's still in the old universe because probably... Aquaman was supposed to come out before Flash. Mm-hmm. It, it it could be that like Aqu- like it could be like that's just like the timeline of things. I think Maybe, I've yeah. I've heard that it is the Flash is rebooting the for James Gunn's mm-hmm. uh, DC universe. Yeah, I know, I know he's mm-hmm. talked about what James Gunn has his like whole timeline or whatever. That yeah, he's gonna be redoing everything. So. Right. <laughs> And like you said, this movie is just riddled with controversy. Yeah. Uh, specifically, just Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller and all the man. dumb stuff they've been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of despicable stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that makes it really hard to have any interest in seeing this movie. Yeah. Um, especially when like the first Justice League movie came out, everyone hated it. I I kind of liked it. I'll be honest. I didn't think it was like horrible. Mm-hmm. But my least favorite part was the Flash. Well, I thought infamously the Flash is introduced while watching Rick and Morty in the background yes. as well in that movie. <laughs> yes, so um, it just kind of stacked. I up. thought I thought the character was just kind of lame and it had lame jokes. Mm-hmm. So I already wasn't really interested in the Flash. And then all the Ezra Miller stuff came out, and I'm like, okay, I've really no reason to watch this movie. Mm-hmm. And then the trailer came out, yeah. and I gotta say, I did not like the trailer either. <laughs> um, okay. It. It felt like it doesn't know what it wants to be. It yeah. feels like, oh, we want it to be this personal story about Barry. Oh, we want it to have this like multiverse feel with two Barrys. Oh, we want to go nostalgic with Michael Keaton. Oh, we want Supergirl in it. And oh, yeah. we're doing revisionist stuff with Zod coming back. And if it just feels all over the place. It's like they don't know what they what the they want this movie to be did you guys ever watch i don't know when this was released but there was a flash movie that it was like an animated flash movie i don't know how long it was released or anything but it had the same concept of oh yeah the flashpoint yeah the yeah, Fla- yeah. I, yeah. I, I haven't seen about. it but i've heard he, good things about it because I, I remember watching that and it was so good like because he goes back in time to try and save his mom which alters the timeline and at the very end it's just like he, it's like a really messed up timeline and he has <laughs> yeah. to go back and change that basically and it feel like at first I thought it was gonna be that, but then like you said, it just kept like snowballing into like some weird, like I just it felt like a fan yeah. fiction. Yeah, and like, like Michael Keaton, he's seventy. He cannot be moving like that. No. <laughs> what do you mean? Didn't you see him in Morbius? I did. Yeah, <laughs> all seven it, seconds was so they were stif- able to afford. He was so <laughs> stiff in it. He was like he could barely move. And they're like, well, we used all our uh, Michael Keaton face budget. Now we got to put a mask <laughs> on him uh, and get a voice actor because he did not want to show up. Yeah, I, man, I, I feel like everything's screwed up right you now. You and I can team up. Um, For some reason, I think this is Spider Man's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I've never very much like cared for the like. DCCU? DCEU. What, extended and, universe? Yeah, now it's DCU. Okay. But, um, like, when James Gunn reboots it. But, like, I don't know. Uh, the fl- like I think Super Speed is one of the most interesting. In, like, it is, sure. yeah. It has so much stuff you can explore with it. And um, specifically, Flash is Super Speed, too. Yeah. Which is yeah. Because it's, like, it's not just, like, well... This isn't the superhero or superpower podcast, but I could take up 50 minutes talking about <laughs> super speed. Uh, however, uh, this version of the Flash just looks lame. Uh, he, his suit it, looks so yeah. stupid. I'm. I. It's just there's something no, no, about right. it, like yeah. the the gold trimmings on it. Like it just looked weird and awkward. I yeah. guess. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the you, run too is just so awkward. Have yeah. you ever seen the CW show? I haven't. Um, I watched like the first few episodes, maybe. I don't but. know his name, but the guy who plays him, he's also from Glee. Grant Gustin. That sounds right. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, I was gonna say Sebastian. He was like evil in Glee. I think, I think his name's Sebastian in Glee. Uh, he, uh, the songs he was in went hard in Glee. So oh yeah, no. Shout they, out to my were. smooth criminal <laughs> fans out there. Yeah, Grant um, Gustin. Not to out myself as somebody who's seen Glee, <laughs> um, but you've already done it. It's it's a rite of passage. Um, yeah. but anyways, I. I don't, I don't know. I, to, or the reason I was bringing his up was because I know 
Like that show's been on for a long time, and I it's CW, and they're infamous for CW um, level like storytelling you know, effects. The week the first episode of the, the Flash TV show came out was the week that the Flash movie was announced. Nice. And now the Flash TV show is going to end before the movie comes out. Gotcha. I I wonder if they're gonna. They're, I mean, if they're doing multiverse stuff, they'll probably rope it into each other. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't think so. I don't think they like, want to deal with the TV stuff. It very much feels like this movie kind of like it's like we're the Flash, and then yeah. it just like took a they every every writer in the room put an idea on a piece of paper, dumped it in like a hat, and then they yeah. poured the hat out and like, said, "We're doing it." Batman. Batman. <laughs> Batman. You know, I really liked Michael Keaton as Batman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can see him. <laughs> I'm Batman. We can get Michael Keaton. People would come out and see that. I, I have seen people asking if Christian Bale's going to be in it because if it if looked like his, his, his bat cycle. yeah, that's what. But I apparently, was it there. is Ben Affleck, okay. at least in that shot. They 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 also said there was Andrew Garfield for um, No Way Home. He was like, I'm not gonna yeah. be in this movie. Right. So. Yeah. Well, the, like I'm people did like werewolf. a zoom in and hands, and it was Ben Affleck, but Christian Bale could show up. I don't know. I at this point, I don't really care. Like, yeah. Whatever happens yeah. with that franchise happens. Just, well, I, I'm excited for to see what James Gunn does. Mm-hmm. Um, Speaking of James Gunn, yeah, he's he's got a lot of money coming in, uh, for sure. Uh, do you want to say right right now, or do you want to? Yeah, do you, you want to let our thought? guest finish his thought? Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I, I don't remember my no, thought. Just, oh no, no I'm, I'm sorry. Nice <laughs> I'm the nice it's one. It's all here. Anthony's fault. So. It is. <clears throat> Anyways, go on. James Gunn. Uh, <laughs> his new universe. His new universe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm excited for it because I've I've, I've uh, read and seen about the stuff that he wants to do with that. Mm-hmm. Um. It's just because they're like completely scrapping like the, like everything, the, I the think. universe that they've yeah. had before. So if they're introducing like as cool of a character as I think uh, Supergirl is, uh-huh. it's confusing to me as to why they're introducing her in this movie if it's just gonna get scrapped. If, yeah, if it's a one right. movie thing. And I'm like, because she's a really cool character, mm-hmm. and I would like to see that more. But if, like, if it's getting do scrapped, you, do you think because they are doing a Supergirl movie that it'll be the same character? Because Viola Davis is coming back as Amanda Waller. <sighs> I sure. honestly have no idea. I also do want to shout out the CW Supergirl. Uh, that actress who plays her is also from Glee. Anyway, oh, she is? <laughs> yep. Yeah, she's uh, Marley. It, this is the Glee. The, the Glee universe. The Glee universe. universe. Yeah. Uh, I draw the line when Matthew Morrison starts <laughs> starts acting in He's any gonna superhero movie. He's going to be the new Lex Luthor. Um, <laughs> shave his Will head. Schuster is a... <laughs> is an Avengers level threat. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, no, that's Sue Sylvester. Let's, let's switch universes here. We got a new trailer coming out for the MCU. Yes, um, we got the Guardians three. Um, it's everybody's back. Chris Pratt is back. We got a lot of crossovers happening in these trailers. Yeah. Um, Anthony, what did you think of this trailer? As our millions of listeners know, mm-hmm. we have been down on the MCU a lot recently yeah and for us ant-man is kind of the make it or break it i think it's also guardians 2 um and i guardians 3 2 Uh, (laughs) oh also yeah be Um, careful there and i i've not been really excited about this i thought the first trailer was okay um in this trailer it it brought it for me i liked it um I think the most important part was it seems like they're bringing the emotion in this. I really like the soundtrack choice. It seems like, like I said, it's going to be an emotional journey, and it feels like the end for these characters. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows how it will end? Mm-hmm. Um, I will say some of the uh, humorous moments I thought were funny, like the end gag with like Nebula's eyes, mm-hmm. but it didn't seem in line with Peter's character. To say yeah. that because he is so in love with Gamora, why would he even consider mm-hmm. like having a crush or whatever on Nebula? Yeah, I'm like, okay, it was funny, but it didn't feel like a fit. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I really like this trailer, and now I do feel excited about this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't think this trailer really helped much for me. Yeah, uh, I think I don't know. I think I'm tired of these characters for the most part. Um, yeah, I feel like well. Right now, with Guardians and and probably Ant Man, which I've not seen yet, which um, we are reviewing next week. Yes, uh, be on the lookout. I think everything, like they're just kind of milking the last drops they can of 
the first phase of the MCU, or the first saga of the yeah. MCU. That, or sorry, uh, you keep going. And they kind of have, they have to, because that's what people like. Uh, and it's, it just, I don't know. I'm tired of, like, I don't know. All the, I don't see where else they can go. I'm tired of, like, if this movie finishes the Guardian story, then kudos. Yeah. That's why I am excited. Um, mm-hmm. But you can finish your thought first. I'm worried. Thank you. <laughs> I'm worried about this movie trying to open way more doors than it's mm-hmm. shutting, which has been every movie up to this point. I'm sure whenever I see Ant Man, it's not going to be any different. I'm sure. Oh yeah, with Kang being the villain. Exactly. Like, like that's the the movie was created to introduce Kang, um, and I don't think in this movie, like I don't the the villain is from uh, Peacemaker, Peacemaker, which yeah. is exciting. Um, it looks great. In James this. Gunn is like, if you work for James Gunn, you're gonna, you're getting your work in. Yeah, he's like, I like people who are easy to work with, and so he's like, I, so yeah. I'm gonna recast them if I can. And we're gonna get John Cena in the MCU eventually. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's, it looks fine. It doesn't look as colorful as the other Guardians movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things I like most about Guardians one and two is that it explores space. Uh, yeah. And it, sh- there's so much like there is v- a certain level of vibrance to it, yeah. especially like Ego's planet alone. Uh, and I don't think this trailer really showed that off well. It looked very dull, and that could be what they're going for. But that's what yeah, Ant Man was going like for. That. And now it's just like I don't it know. It all looks it, like samey. It's blending together. Yeah, I got uh, that. And I don't know the Disney Plus shows. I don't even know what's coming next for that. But like I don't. Yeah. Oh, wait, I think it's Secret Invasion. That sounds right. It yeah. it just feels like everything in the MCU is built out of stepping stones at this point. Yeah, I uh, completely agree with and, that. Each stone isn't its own individual story. It's just mm-hmm. whatever's coming next. Yeah. I just, we'll, or sorry, yeah. I, I just yeah. think the MCU's dry. Like not, yeah. dry, they're just running out of ideas. Totally. They're like yeah. churning out content, like mm-hmm. in movies and TV shows, instead of trying to expand or it, like experiment. It, yeah, instead of making really good standalone movies, they're trying to expand upon the MCU itself. And instead of focusing on those films, they're trying to make as many as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, they're so, like, literally, I'm not excited for Ant Man. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I Guardians of the Galaxy was such, like, a, when I saw that new. back in 2014, I loved it yeah. to death. Yeah. I like, me it, too. It, like, it completely changed my taste in music. And I was like, oh my God, this is, movie is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but now with, like, even the newest one, I'm just kind of like, I guess mm-hmm. we'll have to see. Did you like, watch exactly. the trailer? Um, I have seen parts of it, okay. and the only good thing I can say about it is I like their costumes because I think it's closer, yeah. like comic book. That's how mm-hmm. they looked in the yeah. comic book as well. Like so. for me, I I completely agree with all of you, but like you said about them milking every last drop, mm-hmm. for me it's like they like James Gunn knew what he wanted to do with this. And everything that he said, all the actors who have said we're done with Guardians after this, it feels like with at least this movie alone, they have a direction and they know that this is going to be it, Mm -hmm. that they're not going to milk it anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's what has me a little more excited than Mm -hmm. the other projects. Um, But yeah, I'm really hoping they do stick with that and it does become like the end for these Guardians or at least this configuration of the group. Right. Um, And just James Gunn just ends it with like a bow. We'll see. Um, I'm definitely skeptical. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because I'm sure James Gunn would want to do that. It's mm-hmm. a matter of Disney letting him. Yeah. Um, And that's really the main struggle. It's like, uh, oh, you wanted to tell a story. Yeah, you no. want to kill Drax? Uh, we're about to make a whole new line of figures, so we can't really do that. No, he's it's going to be a multiverse Drax, so Dave Bautista doesn't have to come back, because he's like, I'm done with Drax. Oh, Dave Bautista was really good at Knock the Cabin, so he should... He was. I encourage him to get out yeah. of the Expand. MCU while it is slow. It's not... It, it, I don't know. It's yeah. frustrating, because the MCU is not going away. They're still going to make no. infinite loads of money because yeah. it is it is the it it's is the, the big biggest mouse. thing ever right now. Yeah, um, and so it, it'll take a lot, I think, for that because as long as they're going to keep printing out these movies, people are going to keep seeing them, and nothing's going to change. Yeah, uh, I think and, that's the hardest part. Well, I just I know I, I, I think some of the people have said that the it's like building up to something bigger, mm-hmm. like with. Phase one of Marvel with like Iron Man and Thor and Captain America and all that, um, they were slower movies. Mm-hmm. They were a lot different. Uh, and they eventually built up to like the Avengers and then mm-hmm. Age of Ultron and then obviously like Infinity War and Endgame and all that. 
But even when you look at, like, these movies compared to those, like, it's just, it feels a lot more empty and hollow than mm-hmm. yeah. what those movies it's were. Because, you like, they know what they're doing now, and so it, they know they want to build up to something, but it doesn't feel like they know mm-hmm. what that is yet. The whole But, like, when it started, yeah. it they didn't know, or they, they had a semblance of a plan, but it's like, let's make good movies first and then figure out how we connect them later. Mm. And then they they were able to do that really well. But here it's like, we know we want to connect it, but we don't know how, so let's just try however mm. we can. The old movies were standalone films that you that told a single story. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you stayed for what they, well, they didn't invent it, but they definitely capital or like the popularized scene. it was post-credit yeah. scenes, mm-hmm. uh, which were created with good intentions. Uh, and now every movie feels like a post credit scene as it's like it's just trying to answer your like theories about yeah. oh like here's a teaser for a villain that's gonna yeah. co- like come back mm-hmm. later but and, like, not relevant at all during this movie. We mm-hmm. have been talking a long time about this. Yeah. But that's why whenever we did talk about like a recent Marvel project and we praise it, like something like Moon Knight, mm-hmm. it's because it felt like it was its own distinct thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have you watched Werewolf by Night yet? I've not. That is so good because it is its own thing. Mm-hmm. Like, they reference the Avengers at the very beginning, mm-hmm. and then that's it. And that's because it is standalone, and that's what makes it so good. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. all the other stuff, it's like, no, we have to connect it somehow or some way. And and I think when, when those first... But when Phase One of Marvel came out, it's like what Austin said: standalone movies with a title of it being Marvel. Exactly. And, and, yeah. and the only way they really connected was by those post-credit scenes. And so when you got to Avengers and all, I remember that was like mind-blowing seeing right. that. Yeah. The very it was first like, time. Whoa, they're actually like, doing they're this. They're fighting right now. Thor and Iron Man, and Captain America. Whoa. And now it is like just these are MCU movies. Like it yeah. is. Mm-hmm. It's like you're not going to be surprised if Falcon shows up. Yeah, Every like, movie feels like an Avengers movie because it's just like what crossover is going to happen next. And, yeah. and that's it makes it less exciting to like know that because I remember even like with Infinity War seeing everybody come together and all that was just crazy. But now knowing that everything is like connected and all that and I'm just like what like. Where can you go from that, essentially? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, we have been okay. talking about this for a while. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I've said my piece about Guardians and the MCU as a whole. Do you I'm have content. anything more to say? Uh, I think I'm content. Cool. Yeah, that it comes out in May. It'll probably be our season finale mm-hmm. review. Check out for that. But, yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and move on to uh, our bigger chunk. We have two more things yes. to talk about. We do still have our main movie, which is somebody I used to know. Um, we are going bef- to talk about it. We uh, we promise. Uh, but before that, let's talk about the newest episode of The Last of Us. Again, spoilers. Yes. We should probably start mentioning spoilers at the beginning of the episode as well so people don't we get should. all the way in here. Yeah. Um, um, spoilers for episode five. Yes. If you haven't seen it, what – should we do like ten minutes for this one, maybe five? Um, We can do – let's do seven and a half. Seven and a half. Like yeah. last time, yeah. Exactly. Seven and a half. All right. Uh, I'm going to start the timer now or not – well, not now. Uh, skip ahead. Uh, seven minutes or seven and a half minutes starting now. Okay. All right. What'd you think? I loved this episode. This is probably uh, my second favorite episode behind episode three so far. And that's because Henry and Sam, they are such good characters mm-hmm. um, in the game and in this. They they did them so well. Um. Yeah, I, I just I just want to start with that. What yeah. did you think? Uh, I super agree. I think there is a lot of credit to be given to the casting uh, director and yes. the, that team who chose the, uh, like everybody in the show. Um, they felt very well, the the, sh- the purpose yeah. of the show is to showcase humanity, and I think the casting is done. Did you hear about how they that. got Sam? Uh, no. So they were trying to find a deaf actor, mm-hmm. and they couldn't find anyone who matched like Sam's description. Mm-hmm. So they just put out a like open call on the I think on Twitter uh-huh. seven people responded the person who played Sam was one of them and he just knocked out of the park mm-hmm. and it's like I love stories like that who's yeah. just like a kid who just put in an audition and got the part yeah and he he did so well with it mm-hmm. I think it was also just a really unique and great choice to make him deaf mm-hmm. because that just adds to like how much he relies on Sam right and then it just it just makes it all the more heartbreaking later on when you find out oh he's infected right um that scene with him and ellie 
Mm-hmm. That was probably one of the bigger deviations from the show to the game. Mm-hmm. And I think it was better because it shows how Ellie wants to help people mm-hmm. and how she couldn't. And yeah. that's what drives her to want to get to their destination so she can, like, find the cure. Mm-hmm. I remember I watched this show or this episode with my parents, uh, and I, they were both convinced that uh, Henry and Sam were going to join them. Yeah. Uh, and Did you know? I, I I knew uh, yeah. that wasn't due to like any experience I have with the game or well it is but it's also just like storytelling like motifs like it, look at the poster man yeah like you saw episode two you saw every other episode of this show it's it's Joel the and Ellie's on the story wall. yeah um but I think I think on a widespread scale uh, this episode is really good it was similar in like it. it it kind of like I think this purpose was to retell the story that we got from uh, episode two, but after the development that we've gotten for Joel and Ellie so far, um, um, just in do the you sense, mind just expanding on that, yes, yeah, uh, or just with the um, the death of um, Tess, Tess, and just how that went about, where it's like, okay, here's a these two going together, the outside of the party they get bit. And it's like, well, everything, like, look how easy everything slipped away. Um, yeah. And that, like, telling the super emotional story of Henry and Sam going through another 60-minute long episode. Uh, and then just, like, that gut punch at the end. Where yeah. it's like, well, of course one of them was bit. Um, but it's just like. Also, that scene dang. with all the infected yeah. running around. Super duper good. Terrifying. The, like, I, the I, bloater. I don't know. Who or the too, kid. Uh, I don't know too many details about it offhand, but I know, or I saw something about, or an article about the actual production that went into that. Yeah. Um, Because, or like they had some massive bodybuilder for the suit. They had like 60 plus people. I remember they did, it was like four to six hours of makeup. Yeah. And they needed a team of, I think they had 20 makeup artists Mm. running the entire time. Yeah. It was insane. I was a little bummed out at first because they were hyping up the bloaters so much Mm. um, that we didn't see much of it. But then looking back, I was like, no, it makes it even better uh-huh. because it, it builds it up as this unstoppable threat that yeah. your only chance is to run mm-hmm. and get away from it. Right. And the little even that you see of it is just horrifying, along with just the swarm of the infected and the clickers and that kid clicker. Mm-hmm. Like just seeing it was terrifying. But then when you think about it, it's like that kid was bitten mm-hmm. and turned into a zombie and then was a zombie for so long and became a clicker. It's definitely something you don't think about often. Yeah. Or like or with just zombie apocalypse stuff, you don't think about kid zombies. Yeah. But they're there. And then like they're be. there. What did um, you, how do you feel about Kathleen? Cause I know there's been a lot of discourse about that. Um, I think Kathleen fits in well. I think the yeah. dynamic of I thought her she was great. with like them finally elaborating in this episode that her brother was the real leader and that she's just a sociopath who took over that yeah. they still respect through association. I think that makes more yeah. sense. I really love the turnaround of like, oh, she's, she was just an ordinary person who has become hardened from this world mm-hmm. and now has to rise up to. No, she's always been like, like you said, a sociopath mm-hmm. who is just like filled with vengeance and revenge that she's okay with letting a kid die. Right. And she thinks that that's like just the part of life and he was meant to die, like she says. Mm-hmm. And also just builds up so perfectly part two, which I won't elaborate on whatsoever, mm-hmm. but it, it sets it up super well. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know if I have much more to talk about with Last of Us. Five think... minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, if okay, there's so any we closing did good. thoughts that you want to have. Um, I, I just thought it was a super great episode. I love, I, in the game, once Henry and Sam die, there is just a straight cut to black. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish they did that because it just, it hits you harder with just mm-hmm. the cut to black. Um, but I also loved seeing the aftermath of yeah. it and just how Ellie has changed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a really great episode. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for next week. Yeah. I think there's been a lot of material character growth or yeah. character growth that has like, they've demonstrated yeah. very well. Have you been watching like the next up on? Absolutely not. No. That's, okay. I, those are disgusting. Yeah. Those are disgusting. Trailers are disgusting. I, 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 I watch it. it for this show, I hate it. 
be just because I'm like, okay, I know what's happening in the game. So, like, let me see what, what you're going to do next week. I don't know what's happening in the game. Yeah. And I forgot, and I don't want to know. Yeah, I'm, I, I won't say anything. Thank you. But thank I watched you. it. I appreciate that. Yeah. My parents watch it because they they're did. crazy. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I If you want to watch it, sure. And I know it generates interest for the next episode for people, like, over yeah. 50 that can't comprehend <laughs> what's going to come next in the story. But, like, man, I don't – I like – if I am hooked on your show, I shouldn't need like a, a big giant flag being like, look, look what we have. I'm going to yeah. hang this in front of you. Just like let me experience it. Also, most of those spoil the episode. And they, they do. Like, it, do very it did. impactful moments. Um, it did kind of. Yeah. So If you know what uh, – if you know the game, mm-hmm. it did. But, but anyway. Anyways, that's seven minutes. Uh, cool. So, we did it. Uh, we got 20 seconds until our, our wonderful viewers come back to us. Andrew, how are you doing? Felt pretty good. That's awesome. Uh, I, I, I've, you know, I've seen Last of Us up to episode three. So yeah, cool. apologies for the spoilers. We did. I, uh, I we zoned did. out so hard. So, <laughs> okay, uh, so what we were saying was, uh, yeah. So I mean, I know what I know what happened. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, that's seven thirty. Welcome back, everybody. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into our main topic. Uh, we have a new Amazon Prime yes. original. Uh, not not by, a big week for movies. Not really. Uh, it's directed by Dave yeah. Franco. Yes, um, his second directorial effort. Yes, the I believe he is married to Allison Brie. He is, um, yeah. But yeah, uh, it's a it's Valentine's Day. We figured we'd try and find a rom com. Happy Valentine's for you guys. Day, um, Austin. Will you be my Valentine? Nope. Oh, uh, so Andrew, let's, will you be my Anthony Valentine? Anthony, I'll be your Valentine. Thank you. Uh, and that's why we keep Andrew around. We Andrew has been in the uh, studio for every single episode. We he just has. we usually don't let him talk. I yeah. yeah you, we usually just keep him in the corner. D- yeah. d- they had my uh, mouth duct taped, and he did I'm... figure out the uh, combination the other day, which was really impressive. Actually, he did. You've been trying yeah. that for a while. We're proud of you, bud. Yeah, I'm observant when sitting in the corner. Anyways, so anyway. let's go ahead and talk about. <laughs> I hope that came over as a bit and doesn't actually incriminate us in the What do the you future. mean a bit? No. <laughs> Anthony. It, it, it was a bit. It wasn't a bit. It, uh, so anyways, uh, let me just... Uh, just Okay. Um, somebody I used to know. Yes. Uh, general thoughts, super broad. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Anthony, what would you give this movie? Score. You want to know. I want to know, okay. know your score right off the bat. Uh, 42 out of 100. Okay. What about you? Gotcha. I would probably give this movie like a fifty, like a fifty-two. Yeah, around there. Uh, let's go ahead and now let's Let, dig into let's the elaborate. Scores. What did you All think? right, because the discussion is what matters most, not the score. Okay. Yeah. Um. So this movie. Well, now everybody clicked away. Yeah, they're our like, scores okay, is what done. they come yes. for. Um, this movie, man, I I was really rooting for it, mm-hmm. and it just let me down. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of this movie, mm-hmm. mainly because I don't think um, the two leads are likable whatsoever. Um, Andrew, do you have something to say? <laughs> no? Uh, uh. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew <laughs> Bellinlaw has yeah, been well, laughing in this corner the entire time. Yeah, incredibly. Yeah. We're going to keep oh, you in the corner this go, time. Look, let me, let me speak for myself, okay? Okay. Austin just gave me like Get a little closer. a little smolder. Yes, I did. He did. And like the rock. I'm the smolder king. He's a smolder king? Yeah. Well, welcome to our podcast where yes. everything is audible, but you just kinda you have to trust. You have to him. yeah, you have to believe it. Yeah. And um, I just put him the Austin shame. Austin is entirely like pretty good at that. I'm I'm actually Maybe. kind of scared now. Yeah. I just watched Zoolander the other day. <laughs> um yeah. the only Part yeah. I remember is just when all of his roommates get gas and they blow themselves <laughs> up. Yeah, and they uh, the or have you has everybody here seen Warren Zoolander? Mocha, Spoilers for Z- <laughs> <laughs> yeah the fountain at the, the end. I got the black loan. Uh, it's uh, most of Zoolander is good unless it's the parts that aren't. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. somebody used to know. Um, one of my first notes was I do really like how it's made. Like, the look and feel of it. It's a very grounded look. It's very different from your conventional romance movie. Mm-hmm. But almost everything else I do not like about this movie. I think uh, the Andrews are having a smolder contest inside our studio. Uh, and uh, just kind of disrupting the whole kind of flow of things. Uh, Anthony, I don't think these guys can have their own podcast. I don't actually. think so either. Let's I, cut their mic. I think I think we're we're totally good on having a podcast, right, True? Yes. Sure. I think um, if you were Austin, to... what did you think about this movie? I, 
I don't know. It wasn't very interesting. Yeah. It wasn't very captivating. Rom coms are like they can be really good and yeah. they can be silly and funny. Should we give um, the general plot? We can. It, it's, yeah. Have you seen? It's a Hallmark movie. For those who uh, are listening, have you seen a rom com movie? This is one of them. No, I wouldn't even say a rom com movie. Well, this is a Hallmark rom com yeah, movie. It's like it's but big city person goes to small town with person. quirky job. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, goes to visit her old small town to visit mom, mm -hmm. and then oh look, she meets up with an old flame, mm -hmm. and after a night of romance, she finds out that oh my god, he's engaged. And not only is he engaged, he's getting married in two days. <gasps> so, because of that, immediately, you do not like the male lead. Because it's like, why is he cheating on his fiance? Right. And then, Alison Bree's character, who, like, she's the lead. At first, she's, like, kind of likable, but mm -hmm. not even not really, because her job is to interview people. But the very first thing you see her do is just manipulate someone mm -hmm. and she's like yeah that's what i do i love manipulating people yeah and so i'm like okay so you kind of suck too mm -hmm. but then once she finds out that the ex is engaged she says okay i'm gonna break them up yeah J just because and i know i'm gonna move back at, like to the big city anyway but i want to break them up because mm -hmm. i want to get with my ex just for a day Oh, I think at that point she didn't really know if she wanted to come back. Yeah, now, that's like that. That's fair. That's the hallmark characteristic for her. Yeah, that they. That's the only thing they have about her. Is, yeah, or context is that her show gets canceled at the beginning of the uh, movie, mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, oh, well, I'm gonna take some time off work, uh, and she's like, the, I'm the busybody. I never take time off, but I'm gonna go to this small town, say hi to my mom. Yeah, uh, and it's like. Okay, I've seen this movie. Yeah. And then the antagonist, who is like the fiance, mm -hmm. who they're like, oh no, don't like her. It's like, no, she's the only semi likable person or lead, I will say, mm -hmm. here. Because, yeah, she's trying to like sabotage Al Alison Brie, mm -hmm. but it's because she, she sees what Alison Brie is doing. Yeah. And she's like, why are you trying to ruin not only my like my wedding but like my life with this person who is about to start like mm -hmm. don't do that yeah um, um yeah so just the leads were just super unlikable and it made this movie hard to watch mm -hmm. uh i agree um i think to a certain st extent that's what they were going for but i think they did it in a bad way yeah um cuz there you can have a character with flaws that's still likable um this movie did not do a very good yeah. job of that um, I think we're probably in a good position to go into spoilers. We haven't been talking do, about it for very I long. I mean, I, don't, I do have a lot of things to talk okay. about that aren't spoilers. If you, yeah. Um, the like we said, it's a rom com. Yeah. The humor in this, I did not like. Um, yeah. in my notes, I said the humor, um, oh. some of the jokes go on for t way too long. She got Danny or Pudi are back in here, uh, dude. super immature. Some jokes are just lazy callbacks. And then I wrote, um, that oh, that's mainly just the beginning. Then it just isn't funny. It like <laughs> yeah. it's just like they're not even trying to be funny. Yeah. Um. Like you said, Danny Pudi yes. is in this movie along with Haley Joel Osment. Um. They are the standouts for yeah. me. Um. The supporting characters I really like, especially Danny Pudi. Uh -huh. He is the standout in this movie yeah. because he is like the voice of conscience. Mm -hmm. Um. Because he's like, why are you trying to break up their wedding? He is. She's the amazing. Audience. He's he's a good guy, even though. The male lead, he's kind of a really bad person, especially yeah. once you like get more into the movie, and it's like you you kind of suck, mm -hmm. but it's okay because it's a rom com, so he has to be good. Um, yeah, one of my notes was community reunion. Yeah, I was like, yeah, course. I'm hyped. Um, feels Six like seasons. yeah, <laughs> feels like the movie wants to be multiple things at once, and so it's super messy. Where it's like, oh, we want to be this rom com, and then. But we want to be an R-rated rom-com, so we want Edge, and then we want to be this like drama about oh, what am I going to do with my life, and or we want to be like a Mean Girls esque movie. Explain the Mean Girls thing. I have no idea what you mean by that. Well, there's a uh, a good chunk of the movie where Allison Brie and the fiance are just like kind of battling it out to like win the favor i don't think that's like a big chunk i think that's like two scenes oh yeah but it it takes up like at least 10 minutes of an hour i would and like say that's a big movie. chunk of the movie i guess mm -hmm. i um, wouldn't say 
I I don't think the movie is very muddy or like I think it knows what it wants to be. It just does a poor job of executing that. That's um, fair. And we can't really talk about much, or I can't talk about much till spoilers. But um, let me just write down what I'm thinking right now. Well, also the the male lead and the fiance they do not have good chemistry. Mm-hmm. I. I didn't believe that they were in love and they were about to get married. And in some ways that was the point. Mm-hmm. But um, And I thought they did do that aspect well. But then in other parts, it's like, I, I just I don't believe this. Like right. with the law of the movie, I just don't believe what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It was just – it was hard to buy in for a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I am good starting spoilers now. Okay. Um, or do you want to do Rotten Tomatoes? We do Rotten Tomatoes and plug everything first. Yeah. Um, you can you can follow us while Austin yeah. is grabbing wow. that Rotten Tomato score mm-hmm. at N- or that's a wrap NCR wow, wow. doesn't even know his own show Instagram Twitter and YouTube that's that's a wrap NCR go yeah. follow us give us a like comment down below if you're on YouTube did you like this movie what do you think about the many trailers that we talked about. Do you think Vin Diesel was a great action star? Let us know. Uh, yeah, and if I know you guys don't have a time yet, but if the Andrews want to plug what they're working on. So anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> listen here, Anthony, you're gonna be the one in the corner soon. Oh yeah. Uh, we it's a it's it's a podcast uh, that we recently came up with. Uh, Andrew uh, and I are. Have been best friends for a while now, so we figured we'd make a podcast. Play together. the aww, aww. sound effect. Aww. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so we're just two goofy goobers that are gonna goof around on a podcast. Uh, talk about random Wikipedia articles. Yeah. Have guests on. Um, and it'll be called Andrew Squared. So. Yeah, it it, it will be really fun. Hey. I will listen to it. Maybe. If you guys wanted to oh. be guests. What? Oh. Um, oh how how well, generous. Potentially. Oh, I'm, I'm not gonna I didn't sign up for that. I really don't want to work with Austin. I didn't sign up for that. I really don't want to work with Austin. I don't want to. But like you, like you, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Anthony. I don't, so I really anyway, don't want to work with Austin. So anyway, back to Maybe Audible either. Dialogue. Yeah, just you, though. Uh, yeah, Anthony, yeah. So, yeah. what yeah. do you think the tomato meter of this movie is? I believe critics are going to like it a little more than we did. Okay. Because I think they're, like I said, they're going to like the look of it because I did like the look of it. And they're like, ooh, it's fresh. It's new. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a different way to do a romance. Um, I'm going to say 67%. Okay. Uh, for audience, um, I don't think many people have seen this movie. And so I feel like if they um, sought it out, they probably liked it. So I'm going to say 81% for audience. 81? Okay. I'm going to give you a choice. Do you want the tomato meter or the audience first? And I then want... I'll let you redo the score for the second one. I want the tomato meter. The tomato meter. You said 67? Yes. The tomato meter is. Andrew, can I get a drum roll, please? Would you like to guess, too? Uh, is this for the the, the, the I used to know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you gave it a 42 and a 50, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guess a 55. 55. All right. All okay. right. So, I'll guess a 56. All right, we got okay. 55, We only 56. asked for one, Andrew, but thank you. <laughs> and a 67. That was a bit. That was a bit. Yeah, okay, Anthony. My feelings are hurt. Um, the real tomato meter score is 72%. Okay. Yeah, we're in the 70s. Okay. Not certified fresh, but 70. Uh, so it's not as- That's respectable. Yeah. Uh, as far as Rotten Tomato scores go- um, <laughs> Sorry, the certified the other... fresh really got to me. It caught me off guard. <laughs> I was not yeah. expecting that. That's official lingo, dude. Uh, you gotta, yeah. you gotta get in the loop. Yeah, go with it. Okay, Anthony, I will sorry. now give you a chance if you want to redo your audience. I'll, I'll keep score. it. I'll keep it. So, and what was that? Eighty something. Uh, <laughs> I believe you was said, it eighty two percent. I think eighty two. Okay, you said eighty two percent. Yeah. Uh, Andrews, fifty five. Again, 56. All right. So that comes to an average of 55.5 for Andrews. <laughs> yes. That's one consolidated <laughs> score. Okay. Yes. So the audience score. Yeah, they're a hive mind. We know po- this. I will also say the tomato meter only had 67 reviews. Okay. Yes. Uh, the audience score was 100 plus ratings. <laughs> okay. Um, the audience score was. Can't change it. No. Okay. You locked it in. 62 percent oh <laughs> yeah 20 below um you okay. guys i get the point there for sure you do yeah um, you win you are officially the new co-host 
the, both of you. Thank well, God. <laughs> uh, the critics' consensus. While it might have been more satisfying with a sharper focus, somebody I used to know is a funny, uniquely nuanced rom-com with some interesting things to say. I disagree. Uh, let's go ahead and get into spoilers super duper quick. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Next week we're going to do Ant-Man, so Ant-Man and join us Wasp for MCU Wantamania, Thoughts. Number 49. MCU. Um, I'm be honest, I accidentally saw the tomato meter. The um, typical Anthony. No, I accidentally saw it. Typical Anthony. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Overprepared always. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, thank you all for joining. We're going to do you. spoilers now uh, in five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay. Um, this movie tries to flip the head on Rom... Tries to flip the head on rom-coms. Speaking of rom-coms, I'm not going <laughs> to... I won't... I won't... No, I'll just I'll leave yeah. that. Bet- we'll cut that out. That, we're not cutting it, but that stays okay. in that stays in the studio. Yeah. Um, what happens in the studio stays <laughs> in the studio. Okay. <laughs> okay. It is Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, uh, this rom com tries to flip its head, where it's like, because every rom com is like, a will they, won't they? This spoiler alert: this movie is a won't they? Um, and yeah, it's they like, they won't. The whole gimmick is that Alison Brie's character sees that the uh, the main male protagonist, the man she's interested in, is treating his fiance the same way he treated her when they Which originally broke up. Which is poorly. Broke up. It was poorly, yes. Yeah. Um, he's and very controlling, I very thought... much like, you have to open your life yeah. for, or you have to change your life to fit my needs. Yeah. I thought Alison Brie and the fiance were going to end up together. Yeah, and... that kiss was like... I don't know. Well, I felt like they let it up even earlier, too, when they started to start talking. They are mm-hmm. like, okay, we actually do like each other. We yeah. have things in common. And, like, you can tell, like, Alison Brie will support you her when the mm-hmm. the fiancé or the ex will not. Right. And – um. But that that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um. And the fiancé, he just, like, quickly changes his mind. And it felt like he did that because he wanted to get married, yeah. not because he actually believed it. Yeah. But then they end it with like, oh no, he was being, he was actually being supportive, and it's mm-hmm. like, I, I don't buy yeah, it maybe. after, after the, maybe. everything the movie showed us about this guy, which is just that he's like super jealous, um, he he tries to be super controlling when he doesn't get his way, he gets mad, mm-hmm. and like irrationally too, and it's like this guy kind of sucks, but oh no, no, he's good in the end, yeah. it's okay. Uh- this movie is definitely like jumbled in its own way. I know the story they were trying to go for, um, yeah. And I'm like, I'm, ult- I'm glad that like, uh, what is Allison Brie's character's name? Allison Brie. Oh. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, no. that's already not a good sign. Yeah, when about it comes like to movie. following your passion and like, stuff. Yeah. Um, it just kind of felt half like half hearted in the end. I think. Oh yeah. Um, it it feels like, uh oh oh. <laughs> no, uh, not gonna sneeze. Um, I think Allie. like Allie. That's that's right. original. Okay. That's creative. Um, I think the problem with this movie ultimately lied in like you, the movie starts and ends in almost the same place. Like, there's a little yeah. character growth with Allison Brie. It's like, oh, I'm like, going to do documentaries now. And it's like, okay, and yeah, uh, it, there's not a lot of development of anything in this movie yeah uh, it's just kind of like a bunch of misunderstandings and clarifications yeah. that happen really quickly it's like oh she's moved past the ex mm-hmm. it's like well at the beginning she was moved past her ex because she kind of just forgot about him mm-hmm. until she went back home and like met up with him so it's like you created a conflict right. whereas the conflict wasn't even there mm-hmm. at the beginning like with the the character conflict, not the actual like conflict. Right. Uh, overall, I think the only really good thing about this movie was seeing Danny Pudi and Allison of course. Brie interact of course. again. Um, the mom uh, is from In the Heights. Who plays the mom in every movie? Oh, and like she's so good. The the kooky mom who's like. Yeah, I paid so much for this this man. And she's a, she does a really good job yeah. in every movie she's and in. I believe that is. But the, she's just typecast a lot. Her name's Olga. Um. She's Wait, her, what's her name? Oh no, I thought you were talking about Allison Bree's mom. Oh um, no, I'm talking no. about Olga Meredith. Yes, uh, she's from the original In the Heights and the movie In the Heights, and she is very, very talented. Uh, and it was fun seeing her in there. I did not expect that. The she's cast was like kind of popping off. She's in Brooklyn Nine Nine, isn't the she? The supporting cast was popping off. Oh well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, 
Definitely. Uh, but everything else in this movie was pretty rough. Uh, and that's why I gave it a 52. And that's why I gave it a 42, because yeah. I was not a big fan. Mm-hmm. I'm glad this yeah. movie wasn't over two hours. That's a that's a plus. That gets that a, a plus, plus 40 to you immediately. There's a slight post credit scene that is, is super there? wasted. It's the desert island thing. To... Oh, okay. Yeah. Because like, oh, are they it. gonna bring in Jeremy Renner? Right. That's no, what I thought. And then they're it's not. Like, okay. Cowards. It's like why even do that then? Because it's I just agree. a dumb post credit scene. Yeah. Just like, oh, that ha-ha. won't make sense to anybody a, who hasn't seen the movie. It's a weird callback. Like this whole <laughs> movie, they think all the yeah. jokes, like being clever, is hey, remember that one thing we said. Like, an hour ago? Yeah, we're going to say it again. Yeah. Haha, we're funny. Uh, and it's not funny. It was pretty rough. It was rough. Uh, but next week, we have a different movie with a we much do. higher budget yeah, that, that might not be that much better. Yeah, um, it might also be rough. Who knows? I'm I'm hoping it's not, like I hope with every movie, mm-hmm. but I might be proven wrong. Yeah. I don't uh, know. But I, think I love Paul Rudd. Like, Paul Rudd's pretty good. He is. Uh, Paul Rudd, if you're listening, come on the show. love to have you on the show. Yeah. Um. We we'll, will praise the first Ant Man. We'll praise Slightly whatever you want us to praise. Yeah, we will. We will. You can plug. you can come in here and play Mac and me yeah. if you want. Um, we'd love. We will to let be you play as many times as you want. Yeah. We will plug Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Even if we gave it a two, like yeah. Monsters, we will still say go out and see it if you are on the show. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, thank you all very much for listening, uh, and. Until next week. That's a wrap.